from Birmingham, it's Christy. And it's you. And we might have to stop quite a lot because we're at a train station and there's going to be a lot of announcements. Yep. But it's pretty much the only chance we're going to have to vlog before we get on the train and that's going to be even more annoying. So, uh, Birmingham, how'd it go? It went well. Surprisingly uh, well. I think yeah. we were positive and happy by yeah. the time it ended. Yeah, we had, uh, originally we had nine participants apply, oh, well, nine participants who we chose, but we had one drop out the morning of the uh, focus group so we couldn't recruit and we had one person not show up. So we ended up at seven, but seven really good participants. Really good. They gelled and uh, really had a lot to talk about and some, I guess we're, we've talked about the fact we're reaching theoretical saturation yeah. on, some, on some topics. Yeah. So, on the debates, um, generally if you ask people about the televised debates and the ideas of them, all they'll do is complain about them and say how terrible they are. And then if you ask them, okay, so if you had the power to eliminate debates in the next uh, never have oh, announcement. Yeah. So if you uh, give them say if you had the power to eliminate debates from all future elections, how many here would eliminate debates? They're, nobody does. I mean, they still want debates. Um, even all they do, if all they do is moan about them. Yeah. <laughs> so. yeah. Yeah. So that's definitely one thing that we see over and over again. Yeah. And the de desire for more policy, especially obviously from undecided voters, because they're less interested in the personal battles and they're more interested in trying to get information that will help them make up their minds. Yeah. And people are really struggling in this election. They really don't know. Undecided voters really don't, um, are having a difficult time making up their minds. <laughs> Announcement. Yeah. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, it was about um, just a difficulty making up their minds in this election because um, they just don't see a clear result at the end of it. So without knowing kind of how their vote could be used, it's difficult for them to know how to place it. Yeah, I mean, you were mentioning one of the things that came out very clearly in this uh, focus group was the difference between people who were in marginal seats versus those who were in safe seats to to a large extent and how much of a difference it made to their efficacy of the of their vote um, so we had a male participant who said it's the first time in his life he felt that his vote mattered um, and another participant who said I don't know how I'm going to vote but I'm probably going to vote the way uh, the party in the Constituency, uh, constituency, the winning way. The safe seat, yeah, because it's not going to matter anyway. Yeah, so we're getting some really good data that, yes, the marginality, I mean, it makes sense. You'd think, obviously, that it would be the case that people in marginal districts feel more empowered and feel like their vote counts for more. But until you actually ask them and get the data, you can't make that case. You can speculate without data. It's only through data that you can actually start to do confirmation of those theories and test them. Yeah. Um, anything else? Oh, we're tired. <laughs> We're really, really getting tired being on the road. Uh, how many days have we been on the road now, basically? I mean, even with stops, we're working every single day. So I think we've each taken maybe like a half a day off um, or an evening yeah. or two. But quite often we're getting up. You're getting up earlier because yeah. you've got homework. Announcement. And we're back. So I think it's, it's not just um, the travel, although that's tiring, but running the focus groups mm -hmm. ends up being quite exhausting because it requires you to focus your attention um, and manage the time and check who's, which participants have spoken and which haven't and um, yeah, even dual moderating. It's, it's easier but still yeah. draining. Still, still draining, yeah. And then uh, as you mentioned, we are behind on recruitment so um, ideally we should have at least a week um, buffer. Uh, in recruitment, so but uh, we are basically just going to the wire at the moment. Yeah, and uh, part of that is just you know having received the word on the f the uh, study being accepted at the end of February, we then had to you know uh, find out the finalize uh, our a budget and figure out where we're going to be and then contact our local representatives and start booking rooms and then once we had the rooms booked then we had to book the tickets and then we had to book the accommodation and then we had to start doing the website because the University of Dundee person who was going to be handling the forms was on holiday for most of our study so yeah. then we ended up and having we, to we didn't give her enough time to yeah yeah well together, we so yeah we, we don't, didn't have any time yeah. to give her a heads up either yeah so we've ended up you know creating the website and then doing the vlog and we're trying to keep up with our advisory board members and keep people in the loop and the in press releases <laughs> and the tweeting so it's and a lot of work it's every day yeah. yeah and so some of that we could probably have cut out if we didn't want any media attention or we didn't want to be online or do the vlogs yeah. Yeah. but it's still I think we wanted to document how tired we were so that in five years time we don't forget 
Perfect. Announcement. Yeah. And then the last thing is, um, we've got a. We're still recruiting for Colchester. We're going to be going. I'm going to be going into Clacton uh, Monday to leaflet, do a few things, and yeah. Uh, generally, I mean, the study's going well. I just think being on the road a lot is starting to take its toll. And uh, I'm older than you, so it's harder for me uh, being older. a middle-aged woman. <laughs> <laughs> so am <Yes>. I. <laughs> feeling, our, yeah. feeling our age by the end of this. But, yeah, I guess you know, when you have a good focus group, it really gives you a lot of energy and inspiration to keep going. And yesterday's Birmingham, for as difficult as it was to get actually people in the room, yeah. the people we got or gave great data. Yeah. So. Right. Well, I'll tell you what, we're going to go get our train. Uh, so we'll catch you guys later. Um, and when we get to Colchester, I guess. So, from Christy. Bye bye. She just put all the announcements together in like a big at the end. Block switch, block switch, North, Blandywood, Canada, Hemsford, Rugeley Town, and all the stations. Just on, just on and on and on and on and on and on. Platform 8A from the 11.45 London Midland service to Greenwich. Corner at Five Ways, University, Selly Oak, Bournemouth, Kings Norton, Northfield, Longbridge, Bart Green, Alma Church, and Greenwich. This train is full of six coaches. 11.50, Virgin Trains service to Wolverhampton. Yeah, yeah, um, is there anything else that we want to talk about before? And Wolverhampton. Oh, Colchester. There you go, there's the Birmingham. Very exciting. Quite quiet on the Sunday.